Hello and how are you? My name is Hinda Dibarat and I am in our 15th lecture of creating a complete hotel uh, management system. So we always do 30 minutes, so I'll go ahead and set our timer and go straight into our today's business. So in the previous lecture was stopped at the place where a person would go ahead and click on the room to check out. So I can come here and browse all the rooms that are available. And when I want to check out, I just say book now. And I click on book now. If I'm already logged in, uh, the system will allow me to place the date and also put my email address and also my phone number and select the number of days that I want to spend there. And also the what? The, um, the number of people that we are. And then go ahead and place on book now. So we start at this level whereby we could receive the book information. If you still remember in the previous lecture we also uh, tried to design the table. So you still remember here this is the table that we thought that we we're going to have for the bookings or what we call the orders. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, create the table of bookings. And uh, after creating the table of bookings and we start saving there, what? We start saving their data. Alright, so let's do that. So I'll go to our project. I mean, I'll go to the database and go ahead and click on and go to the what? And go to the database, which is um, the name of our database called Hotel Pro. Hotel Pro. Here we are. So this is our database, right? So I'm going to go to, I'm going, we're going to create a new what? A new table. The one that shall be having bookings, we can call it orders. So I'm going to call it bookings. So I click on new here, and then I go ahead and add like more columns as many as I want. Let's say for example, ten columns. I add them here. So in these ones, so I'm going to define each and everything. So let's go ahead and get the name of our table. So I can say our table. We're going to call it uh, bookings. We're going to call it bookings. All right, so let's go ahead and put here bookings like this. That will be the name of our table. So the first thing will be the ID. So we'll put here an ID. It will be an ID, and then you can say it will be uh, a primary key, and it will and we make it what we make it uh, auto increment AI something like that. All right, so that's our ID. We go ahead and put, and put customer ID. So put here customer ID. Make it an integer because we'll be referencing an ID from the customer's table or from the user's table. And then you go ahead and say by default it is uh, okay. We can just make it an integer because an ID, at least, I mean, uh, at least there should be a customer in the project who, has, who made that order. Okay, so the next thing we put customer name. So customer name can be a text and then you make it what you make it. Uh, uh, nullable like this you can just simply come and say uh, by default is null all right that is our, our customer name we proceed to customer phone number customer phone number we can make it maybe a variable character of uh, 45 letters okay and then we proceed to customer email we also make a variable character of maybe 255 and can be null by default and can also make this to be null by default that is important to make things null they will help us not to disturb so go to the, put the room id so you go ahead and put a room id to be an integer and then you go ahead and put the check-in time go ahead and put your check-in time so you can make it maybe a variable character i mean you can make it a, a, a date time or can make it maybe uh, a variable let's make it date and time let date time and then by default you can make it now date time like this uh -huh. then you can go ahead and put um, number of days uh, number of days uh, we can go ahead and put here number of days so it can be an integer it can by default can be null and then you go ahead and put the checkout date checkout date you can go ahead and put a checkout date and make it also date time I can just simply put date to make it simple, just simply date. Right, and also make it nullable by default. 
all right so we go ahead and put adults then our adults will be an integer also can be now by default and then you go ahead and put the children number of children you can also put it there and then make it also integer and then put it now by default uh we proceed and we keep the total price the total price will be here and then make it integer and then you can put also um now by default and then we go ahead and put the order status can put your order status where you can here Five and make it now by default, and then you can put your credit that. So, credit that we make it uh, uh, maybe uh, let's make it a variable character. Shall just be keeping there the timestamp and make it now by default. So, our columns are over. We can go ahead and add more columns like this. So, after adding more columns, can come and add more things amount paid so the amount that has been paid and then make it integer and make it null by default and then also payment method so payment method come and make it what um a variable character of 45 letters and by default and then also payment reference number so payment reference number to be uh, maybe variable character maybe a hundred or two hundred uh null by default and then lastly the payment status payment status they can make it a variable character of uh, 25 and make it null by default so those are the fields that we think we need for the ordering so let's go ahead and create these fields so i'll press the submit button to create these fields save and then say have an invalid length there's something where you said variable character and not specify the length where is it where is there uh, it says if, if i put variable character it has a length i think it is here let's make it create that to be 45 let me go ahead and save so when you save you'll see that our table has been what has been uh, created and that is great so we can take it from there so after doing so So we can proceed. So we have our table that what that uh, has that data. Okay, so let's proceed. Uh huh. So uh, we can just simply click on uh, bookings again, and then we get the columns of this table, right? I copy them. I copy them. So after copying them, I go ahead and. Uh, and go to our project so i can put them here on top you know this is a place where we are submitting and we are getting this we are getting this so let me go back there and now start saving things in the database so i'll just simply come and put these things here so i can start now addressing one by one that the column that i've got from the other side so after validating So I'm checking sure that everything that we need has been submitted. Paste this on here. And I can go ahead and start inserting the order. So I can say data, and then I begin with a customer ID. So I get the customer ID from the session. So let me show you. So in the session, we have uh, something called user. So if I come and here do, sorry, if I come here and uh, printer. Uh, the session you'll see that it 
C. There is a user. What? There is a user uh, field there. So this is the person who is logged in. So if I want to access this user information, the person who is logged in, I can just simply put this here, and then we'll to see the person who is logged in, which is this one here. So customer ID is going to be this ID. What are you seeing here? So if I come and put here ID, I'll be able to get the customer's ID. You can get that. So this is how I'll be getting the customer ID of a person who is logged in. So I'll go ahead and say customer ID equals to that. So we can proceed to another thing. Let me remove this so that is done. So customer name. Customer name, uh, we can collect it also from what? From the database, I mean from uh, from the from the session. So customer's name I'll show you. So from the session we have that so I can get this name of the customer. So I put it here, name. That's done. So phone number of the customer. That one has been sent from the what? From the from the what? From the post method or from the form. So I can go ahead and use the latest that has just been submitted, which is what we call customer's phone. So I collect that one. So we proceed. proceed um customer's email so you also collect the one that has come from the form which is there that has come through the post method uh, so the room that is being booked room id the room id has been also collected from the what from the post method you see we got it here so i just go ahead and put it in the data that I want to insert so check in time so i put the date when this person is planning to check in so i put check in and i put here yeah, check in time as well all right so number of days i've already collected it and then check out, we don't have it, we can press it later. So let's see what we will need to save there next. So check out, we can add there the number of days like this. So it's a date and then you put the day and the, and the time when this person is going to do what? To check in. And then you put a plus and then you put the number of days. This is how you add the days. You can look at the video very carefully and see how we add the days so i get the date and I add there the number of days that were added for as number of days so let me show you how it looks like now so the number of adults number of children we are not collecting it uh -huh. then the total price is going to be the room price times the number of days so the status is pending and then the time and the credit that that is the time how we put the time and then this is uh, the paid amount is zero and then the payment status payment method is nothing for now and then the payment rate is nothing and payment status is not paid which is pending okay so that is it. so let's see what we got in the in the data variable the one that we're going to save you can put here data like this so if i come and refresh you can see how we are going to what we're going to have in our database so that is the date when we created that so it's the time when someone check in and then you add the three days and then the checkout time is this one all right so the phone number and everything is uh, already set and then the reference is nothing and then the payment is nothing for now so uh, you can see that and you can pause the video and look at how I've achieved that uh, You will just watch beginning from here When we are checking the method is posting uh, Here and then watch very carefully and see how it got Up to this level. All right, so uh, That is how we the check. So everything is now set. I can remove this uh, What 
and then we're going to uh, we are now going to do what we're going to we are now going to process and direct this to the customer orders right we're going to direct the, this one to the customer orders so let's go ahead and do that if we save successfully we shall direct this one to the customer orders so payment data can make it null and then payment amount to be null as well right so currency <laughs> You don't need those ones for now. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and the uh, payment status is still pending. We make it pending. All right, so let's go ahead and insert this data in the, in the database. So I'll just simply say, um, you can just write try. So try to try to insert and see if everything is successful. Uh, fail, this is how you say catch. So catch, you put this stroke throwable and then put here so this one will help you to try if there's a failure it will tell you the reason why so so go ahead and try and save so go ahead and say db insert and then you say the let's see db insert we we'll get we are returning true or false so if you're successful i go ahead and say alert message to success and then i say your booking was successful then we direct the user header location and direct this user to customer customer bookings php that is the file that we to create for the customer to do what to manage their booking customer bookings.php proceed uh, that is in case it is successful and if it fails we go ahead and direct the user i mean we go ahead and put this uh, and say something went wrong i can go ahead and display it so i go ahead and put the alert message in case it fails put something went wrong let's try again if i want to display this and i can i can just simply put like this come and put here a dot and then say tr.get message so that's how you try without getting an error try and catch that you try something if there are an error you can like this. Hope you can see that. So it is, if it fails, I return back the user uh, to the original form. We direct the user back to the form like this. All right. So I just simply say, ah, like this. That's how we direct back the user. Okay. So if it's successful, let me clear form in the session like this like that hope you can see that hope you can see that so let's go ahead and refresh hope you can see that hope you can pause the video and watch what, I, watch what i've done very carefully all right okay so yeah all right this is not booking the orders supposed to be booking it's not orders like this that is fine let's go ahead and now refresh submit so you see uh something wasn't right so you need just to display the message there okay so something that's not right um we can put the logic of displaying the error on top so you see it brought us back here so something is not right all right let's go ahead and see what is not right uh in this um Let's, put, let's also go put there a logic of, of checking for errors. All right, let's go and do that. So I go to dashboard header and just copy these top things here. These alert information things. Okay, and then you go so to public header and put them on top there. So let me put them here after the function, and then after. I hope you can see that. Then after I come back here and, and go to the bottom of the pub of the dashboard header and copy this alert logic. All right, this alert logic and go back to the public header and then go so to the bottom of it. We can display here the so I can put here something like uh, uh, MT2 and MB2, something like that. I can just simply say MY2. So if I come and refresh, you'll see that we have an error. So the error is there. 
error card will tell you incorrect date type value so this date type i think we're going to change that column we're going to change that column uh to something else so uh there is an issue with our date input so let's go ahead and change the column of date so i'll just simply come and say structure and then say date i mean sorry look for checking time let's go ahead and change these dates and making them just variable characters all right so search for date select those two then go ahead and change so i'll just simply come here to structure of the table just click on change so after go ahead and change this one to variable character i don't want to hustle with these ones variable character what was the error about the error said yeah the error. So let's put the variable character put uh, 55 put 50, 20 maybe 55 Right, and make them variable character like this and let's save so let's not hustle so much with the dates all right so like that so here to the structure shall have those ones you can check out time in, in variable character 55 let's go ahead and now submit i'll go ahead and uh, if i refresh this message will disappear or maybe you can just simply put an empty five Twenty-five, so it can look better. So let me refresh. Uh huh. So let's go ahead and put the uh, fresh. Let's say we are checking in today, and our email is that, and our phone number is that. We're going to spend four days, and have five. We are three people, and then I go ahead and submit. So submit as this saying successfully inserted and then it is taking me to customer bookings.php but the reason why we're not seeing there because we have not created a file so if we come back to our database now go to browse you can see that at least now we have there our first record uh for the what for the uh for the order right that's our first record okay so let's go ahead and do now uh the customer uh bookings the customer bookings page so now the customer is logged in at this moment so i mean that we're going to make for them a what their respective dashboard so let's go ahead and create this file so i'll just simply come and copy this and then come to our project all right and then go ahead and create a new file just okay come here and say uh, So I can simply come here to, even to it. Come here to the project. Come here and say new file. New file and call it customer bookings.php. So if I press enter and I save, so here the error will disappear, but it will be showing nothing. So in here it's where we're going to put now the customers what? The customer things. So since it is now a web, web a, a dashboard for the customer. So what we're going to do, we're going to put the dashboard headers and what? And footers. So we can just simply come for example here to the room. Room what? I can just come here for example admin. Admin what? Admin category use something like that. I just simply come and copy this type header. Or right, you can just simply come and let's copy this admin category, the whole of it as it is. And then we're going to just benchmark from it. So I'll just simply come and say control A, control C, right? Control A, control C. And then come back to the what? To the bookings, customer bookings. And then then place there uh, whatever. Whatever we've copied. Right? So if I come and refresh here, everything is fine. Everything is fine. So I just need to go ahead and change these ones. I'm going to change these things. And also showing customer what they're supposed to see only. Uh -huh. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, change this room title, to room categories to to what? To room booking. Okay. So come here to customer bookings and then search for room categories. Room categories. This is the title there. 
<laughs> my bookings. Passe made my room bookings. I passe my bookings. And then I can put the subcategory as a list. It's going to be a list of bookings. Like this. Okay? My bookings list. Okay, so after doing that, after doing that, uh, now let's go ahead and remove this button. So we keep the booking should be coming only from the public side. So I'm going to remove this button and make it just totally free. So uh, we'll go ahead and remove this button. So can go ahead and remove the create button. Okay, so let me remove that. So I can have just a table of bookings. So here we're going to display the bookings of a customer. I even don't think that we shall need the data table. Let's see if you remove the data table, how things will look like. So let me first disable this and refresh. See, that's how things look like without a data table. All right, so it is up to you to use it or not. So if I remove it, it's almost the same, but here we have features to sort, filter, or do all these things. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, put the room bookings uh, for the customer. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to just simply get the... Um, uh, we're going to just simply get the what? We're going to just simply get the, um, the rooms, all right? So instead of categories, you're going to have just rooms, okay? So let's see, they have room categories. So instead of having this, I'm just going to say maybe uh, bookings, okay? Sorry, we're going to just get the bookings. So just click bookings and then say DB select and then put here bookings. By doing so, we're going to have all the bookings. So let me show you. Let me just come and put this one on top of the header so you can see it clearly. So if I come here and say echo, and put just like a pre tag and just dump everything and dump everything you'll see that we've successfully got all the what all the rooms all right so let's save all the rooms are there but here the challenge is customers are supposed to, i mean sorry all the bookings here the challenge is customers are to see their respective bookings only all right so we're going to see how we do the logic of making sure that the customer sees they are booked with our respective bookings only. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a where and then say where customer ID go to the ID here. All right. So I'll just simply come here, put a comma. So I can just simply say where, where. So this where, how how does it operate the other side? So the where you just simply put and uh, your condition okay you just simply put your what a condition so just simply put here where customer id equals to the id of a customer that is what that is not been and that's how you get it all right so that's how you shall be able to how to get so i hope that's fine Sorry, 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 this is supposed to be on top there, not here. Here. Like this. So, me that's going to get the customers that are. Uh, we're going to get the orders that belong to this what to this customer. I can even put order by that. So let's go ahead and refresh. You see, you're getting the same what the same results. Why? Because there is only one order that has belonged to the customer that is currently logged in. All right. So let's go ahead and display those orders. So I can just simply come and remove this. Then make this one be here after the required ones. 
I'm just simply going to copy like here a few things and just comment them here like this. All right, so I'm going to display uh, customer orders. So let's go ahead and proceed to the table. So the table is going to have um, it's going to have the date, it's going to have the room that you booked, it's going to have the check-in time, the checkout time, it's going to have uh, adults, you might not need even that, or children, total price, order status, payment status, and then the actions. I think yeah, I think those are enough to get started with. Right, so here we're going to look through the what through bookings, bookings, and then say maybe one of it could be just uh, booking. Right, so I just come to a TR, just go ahead and proceed to uh, TD. So that uh, that's the date. That is the room that I booked for. However, well, we don't have it in the booking, so we might need to get a room. Let's simply say. Uh, room equals to db find and then you save the room so you can check if it is null and we continue if it goes to and null we just come here All right so i got a display here the room name that was booked all right so we proceed to the check-in time, the check-out time, the adults, the children, and then total price, and then order status, then payment status, and then put here some, some what, some actions from some point of view, and then can put maybe view and then maybe here you can just simply put uh delete and cancel all right cancel maybe delete something like that we shall see if we're going to do that in the first finish here so if i save you can watch what i've actually done here right so let's go ahead and refresh all right so line one two five one two five one two five huh? one one two five what are they saying unexpected end of all right we we'll have to end our loop here yeah like this that's beautiful save now come and refresh everything is what everything is beautiful the room is there it has not been uh, the status has not changed and it is still pending whatever i feel like this at uh, these tables we can do better okay so let's go ahead and put the actions so we can check if the room is uh is is check the room if they pay the, the status is pending someone should be able to cancel or delete okay if the status of the room is pending someone should be able to cancel or delete all right so let's go ahead and say uh study the review we can remove it so check here sir um uh if just leave this one view and put here if status is pending cancel so sh show show cancel button so i can do that i just simply put in here question mark and go ahead and say uh, php if the status is pending, I go ahead and show the cancel button. You can watch how I've done that. You see? Let me remove the view button. 
you can decide and put even the delete button okay so this is for the side of customer if the status is pending they should be able to do what to cancel so if i come and refresh you'll see that the button is there so i can say maybe cancel uh booking or maybe cancel order something like that come and refresh now everything is okay cancel booking so cancel booking is going to take to the same right and it's going to take us to the same and then uh, we do what we 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 put the logic of say of taking to cancel see customer booking question mark cancel equals to that so i'm going to put the logic of uh being able to cancel the booking so i'll refresh let's refresh everything is beautiful now let's go ahead and put the logic of what of cancelling okay so i'll come on top of the project just like the way we did delete but i can even put even delete logic delete but here we don't want the customer to be able to delete so we just want the customer to, to cancel only so let me go ahead and get the word that we were sending as our gate so the word is cancel cancel like this so it's going to be much more like deleting but it's not delete delete we shall reserve it for call for, for admin so let me just duplicate this delete we shall reuse it later all right so we put it there um the camera and put um Right and put here if it's cancel say cancel set in gate and put here if cancel id is received then i'm going to say get bookings bookings where the id is the one that we have just got here then i do say if bookings so i can put here maybe booking if booking is empty i can say booking not found I direct back the user say booking not found and direct the back the user to customer bookings.php it is not found direct the user back to the booking.php all right so we proceed uh if it is found then i'll go ahead and do it and then and i said it's just to be cancelled so let me just simply remove this so i'll just simply come and say uh, booking so if i check if the status is not pending i can say booking cannot be cancelled i also check that one from back end so if it passes those two levels i can go ahead and say booking status and then set cancelled like this and then i go ahead and say db what db update so still remember our uh, db update it will take the to take the to take the the table and then the id of an item that i want to update and then the and the what the data that i want to update so this is what i'm doing i'm taking the table let's put next is the id and then the data that we're updating which is booking right i can just simply say booking something like that so i book I update it so i can simply b equals to so i can just update only the changes so that's it that's it so if it successfully does that then you shall know uh i remove this delete thing i can say booking update it successfully or booking cancelled successfully so booking cancelled successfully and direct the user back to the what to customer bookings.php customer booking.php so let's refresh uh, let's click on cancel so you can see booking cancelled successfully and you can see here the status is what is cancelled right you can see the status is cancelled so you can go ahead and say maybe if there is if the if the booking is uh is cancelled i mean if the booking is not in pending you can just show being you can, you can just be showing the customer that um you can just be showing the customer that uh, what that uh, there's no actions okay so i'll put here if it's pending i put uh let's put here else all right like this and then
let's put here else no actions yes yeah, so i think that's enough so here if you refresh here see no actions all right so we can maybe contextualize this uh this what this uh, uh color so you see whether there is uh whether there is uh status so i can just simply come and put here for example i put uh context class i can make it to be nothing so i check the status if the room if the room is what if the room is cancelled i can put here badge badge danger and i go ahead and put another else the room is pending i can put badge warning if the room is confirmed i put badge success okay put here else i mean the booking is is completed with success badge info all right so let's go ahead and put those badges so i'll come here to our class of uh, our class of other status put here uh somewhere surrounded with what with all right so here in order status i'm going to surround it with this span so like this so just surround it with the span and they say badge and they say put here the context class inside this badge next to the badge and then i go ahead and display the class like that so if i refresh you can see it's cancelled i think you should use bg instead of badge let's see Just use BG. All right. So it's cancelled. So it is changed to red. All right. That's it for today. So in the next lecture, we shall come and master the customer should not be able to see these rooms. Customer should not be able to see room categories. They should only be seeing the customer bookings. All right. So that's what we're going to do it in. That's what we're going to do in the next part, in the next lecture. So make sure that uh, you don't miss in the next lecture and then we as we conclude on what on these um, orders that I've just shown you these things that I've shown you. All right so that's it that's it for today and goodbye see you in the next lecture. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys, goodbye. See you. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and we proceed from there in the next lecture. Bye bye.